Today we're going to be focusing on just on this one question. So this is number two. Okay. Now, uh, would you raise your hand if you got the question? Hands up straight. Hands up straight. Okay, a small number of you. Thank you. Hands down. Okay. For those of you who have done that, what I'd like you to do is watch. Do you want? You go, ahead. go around behind next time. That's okay. That's right. We're going to tackle this question. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. So even if you got it, I'm fairly certain you didn't do the question twice. So whichever way you did it, maybe one of these methods were different to yours, or even both of those methods will be different to yours. There's lots of different ways to do these questions. So the important thing for me is not the answer, but it's how do you think about how to get towards the answer. The method, in other words. Okay. So I've got two methods for you. Here's my first one. Method number one, and I'd love you to... Um, write this down. Write this down, please. Method one is to turn a subtraction, this is a subtraction, right? One number, take away another. Turn a subtraction into an addition. <laughs> you seven. I'm gonna ask you to be courteous. Go through this. I do want lots of you to understand how to go about doing this question, and we can't do that if there's going to be continual interruptions. Is that a reasonable expectation to have? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Now, what makes this challenging in the first place is subtraction is hard to do in our heads, right? So one of the classic strategies is to take something that's hard and turn it into something easier. In fact, the second method I'll show you does the same thing, hard into easy, but in a different way. So here's what I'd like you to have under this heading of method one. Think about how this works. If I say, for instance, five take away three equals two. That's a subtraction, and I can turn it into, you did this in primary school, you can turn it into an equivalent statement that's an addition. What addition statement would go with this one? Someone hands up, Fatima. Two plus three. Fantastic, okay. So being that these two statements are really kind of like in the same family, as it were, right? I can use that to my advantage when having a look at this question. So I've got this take away this equals that. Now, I don't know what any of these letters are, okay? So I'm gonna turn the subtraction into an addition. That means I'm gonna read from the bottom up, right? 1998 plus this should equal that. Does that make sense? Just like you can see, I've got the numbers 5, 3, 2, 2, 3, 5, the order changes and the operation changes. Does that make sense? Are you following so far? So let's rewrite it. Yes? But also when you do it, look, it's descending and it's in descending and ascending. Okay, very good. So you can see, uh, that's kind of a coincidence. I could have had like 5, 1, 4. That would have been, that would still be true, but it wouldn't necessarily be in descending order. Let's try and take it to this question, okay? So I'm going to write this plus this equals that, okay? 1, 9, 9, 8 plus... Uh, this 47Y6 number, whatever it is, 47Y6. And my sum at the end will be PR5T. Okay, now you can immediately see this is much easier to wrap our heads around. I mean, I know we could have um, trial and errored our way through the first question, you're just trying to guess things, right? But here it's really easy, for instance, T, hopefully T is jumping out at you. When I rewrite it in this way, T has to be equal to, careful, 6 plus 8 is 14, right? 6 plus 8 is 14. So therefore, this number down here, I need a new color. This number must be a 4. Do you see that, right? It'll be a 4 and I should carry the 1. Like that's just how I do normal addition, right? So it's really good. I know what T is. I'm going to write that over here. I'm going to gather together. T equals 4. So I know one thing. Now when I have a look at the next part, look, this is a bit trickier. I've carried this one, right? So 1 plus 9 plus y, it'll be equal to something and the last digit is a 5. So what does that mean about this y in here? Yeah, Bradley. Uh, y is equal to 5. Y has to be 5. Now how do we know? How do we know Bradley's right? Someone want to try and explain? Yeah, go ahead, Christian. Because 9 plus the extra 1 plus 10. Yeah, good. So that 9 and that 1, right? They'll become 10, so a 1 will carry over here. And all you've got left to make up this 5 is this guy. It must be 5, okay? So I'm going to put in here now, this must be 5. And sure enough, 1 plus 9 plus 5 will be 15. So there's the 5 that I was expecting, and I'm going to carry the 1, okay? So I've already got t, now I know what y is equal to. It's 5. 
Have a look at this. Now I'm going to go straight down. 1 plus 9 plus 7. What is 1 plus 9 plus 7? Yeah, bring on. It's 17, right? So I should have, I'm going to carry the 1, and this guy down here must be 7. So I've got my second last letter, R equals uh, 7. And now you can tell me the last one, right? What's P have to be? I've got no other choices. Yeah, Charlie. Uh, um, 4. Four. Hold on, I've got no. one and one and four, and I'm adding, right? Oh, adding. Oh, that's going to be six, yeah? Okay, so uh, I'm done now. I've got all my letters. Okay, yes. I don't get any of this, actually. So adding? Do you mean addition? No, all these letters and numbers. And okay, so the whole idea is that I'm just sort of standing these letters in place for numbers I don't know. That's all that means. Okay. Uh, question? Well, it's kind of like subtraction and division. Yeah, kind of, in that, like, all these operations, they all kind of interrelate. Like, adding and subtracting, they're kind of like reverse options of each other, and multiplying and dividing, also opposites. Okay, I'm going to show you one more way. Um, that way it was good, it worked, but I think there's an even cleverer and quicker way to do this, okay? So I'm going to leave it as a subtraction, but I'm going to make it an easier subtraction. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, remember how I said, look, I've got some number sentences over here, okay? I can um, have equivalent number sentences based on what I know. So, for instance, if I go, again, 5 take away 3 equals 2, right? I can change some of these numbers and still have an equivalent statement. So, for instance, if I make this number here, 3, if I make it smaller, if I go 5 take away 1, so I've made it smaller by 2, what happens to this guy? You guys know what 5 take away 1 is, right? 5 take away 1, of course, four. is 4. So you can see, because this number has gotten smaller, what happened to the number on the end, the difference? It got bigger. Do you notice that? So if I make this one smaller by 2, this will get bigger by 2. Okay. So I'm going to take advantage of that. If I know that this take away this equals this, this is hard because it's an icky number to deal with. I want an easier number, a simpler number, right? So if I can say, and you can get this down with me, PR5T, whatever that is, okay? Take away 47Y6. If that's 1998, what's a nice round number that's close to 1998? Yeah. 2000. 2000. That's really easy, right? And the zeros will make things very, very simple for me. If I want to make this number, too bigger, what do I have to do to this number? What did I do before? See how I made this too bigger? So what did I do here? It had to get too smaller. Do you see how it's they're compensating for one another, right? It's like you give and you take away at different parts of the equation. So if this is true, like that's just what the question says, I'm going to subtract a number that is too smaller than this. Now, I don't know what y is, so it's going to be 4, 7, y, whatever that is. But because that 6 is going to get too smaller, it should be replaced with a 4. So if I make that number too smaller, then the result at the end will be too bigger, which is 2,000. Now, that doesn't sound like it will make things all that different. Like, what's the big deal? It's still a subtraction. But watch. Let's write this out in proper subtraction form, right? So p... Uh, 5t, take away. Okay, watch how easy this is going to be, right? Think about the subtraction with me. Okay. <coughs> By the way, you don't need your laptops right now. None of you need your laptops at the moment, as you can see. If you're doing this subtraction, t, take away 4, is equal to 0. Do you see that? t, take away 4, equals 0. T take away 4 equals 0. So what number does T have to be? It's got to be, yeah. It's got to be 4, right? The only number that will work here is if T and 4 are the same number. So this has to be 4. How about this next one? 5 take away Y has to be 0. Again, we know Y is going to be. It has to be the same value, right? It must be the same. And I can keep going the way through. R take away 7 is 0, so R's got to be. <laughs> R take away 7 is 0, so they have to be the same number, right? 
And lastly, it's not exactly the same, but some number you take away four, you get two. What number you take away four from? And it's got to be six, right? Which, of course, uh, six, seven, five, four is the number that we got before. Okay. So you can see different ways to go about it. Um, and I don't know which method you like better, which one sort of gels with your head um, and clicks better, but they both work.